So I'm about to jump on a Zoom with um, a woman who spotted the Drew van. And I can't thank our producer, Jessica Yank Lunas enough for spotting her. I cannot tell you how profound and cool and amazing this human being is. On our way back to the house, we uh, live up here. I saw the van and I was like, hashtag Drew van. I'm like, what is a Drew van? And then I looked at the hashtag and I was like, oh my gosh, it's Drew Barrymore. I was like, what if that's Drew Barrymore? We have to go back. And my husband's like, what? I was like, it might be, who knows? So we drove back and then I saw them walking around. I'm like, hey, so tell me about the van. <laughs> so it was a really nice couple and they told me how they had came from California. They're going up to New York and they're stopping at these different uh, stops and whatnot. And uh, they're like, you want to do a shout out? I'm like, yeah, I want to do a shout out. Oh Hi, Rebecca. Hi, Drew. Oh my gosh. Now, Rebecca, I have to say, I was reading about your life and I'm so glad that you spotted the Drew van. Will you just tell us a little bit about yourself, Rebecca? It was a, a difficult childhood. I was in foster care. I grew up, I, I was on my own at a very early young age. I decided to go in the military because it would uh, be a safe place. I could learn um, a career and I plan on doing that forever. Unfortunately, I did have cervical cancer, so I was not able to stay in for life, but I'm, I'm good. How did you deal and how old were you when you found out you had cervical cancer for the first time? When I found out about the cervical cancer, I was while I was actually on a deployment, um, I was in the Texas Army National Guard and we were down on the border. And that's when I found out. And then I had it again later on in my adult life. And it was the same thing. We just had to go through um, uh, surgery and get rid of everything. And for anyone else that's going through it, just stay positive and make the most of every moment you have, even if you don't have cancer. I'm big into learning things or trying something that I haven't done before because I'm 36 and I'm just like, there's so much, there's so much to life. I want to do it all and I don't know how much time I have. So I just want to do it all, you know? We were driving through the Ozarks. I saw some guy fly fishing and it looked like he was like ribbon dancing. Like it was the weirdest. I was like, what is he doing? That's, that's weird. That's not boring like fishing. Like that looks fun. I want to go do that. So I tried it out and fell in love with it. And now I just want to encourage other people to be new at something. Like I'm going to start working with foster cares and helping them learn how to fly fish through the Mayfly Project, which is huge because I feel like if you have been through the foster care system, or even if you had a rough childhood, if you can stop the cycle for someone else, or if you can be there for someone else, you have no idea the impact you may have on that person's life, and it will be a ripple effect. <sighs> okay, what is your advice for people who wanna go after learning a skill, a hobby, realizing a dream. Do it. Um, don't talk yourself out of stuff. Just get out there and experience life while you can, while you have your health, while you have your time, because you won't get those later on in life. You are so rad. I don't know if you know Flower Beauty. I just am gonna send you a bunch of care package oh. stuff, but really, most importantly, I'd like to make a date in the future with you, Rebecca. Yes, I would love that. We would have so much, like I organically, authentically know we would connect and have so much fun. Your perspective is in a profound place, really and truly. I'm so glad that I got to meet you.